Hello, it's Melinda from Scrapbooking and Craft. Just coming on today to do a one page collage. Basically, um, I was looking at a YouTube video by Jamie Ridler Studios, and I'll link her channel below in the video I was watching. And she took one magazine page and chopped it all into pieces, basically, and made new images out of it. Um, so I thought that would be fun, fun challenge. I love using magazines in my collages. So when you choose your magazine page, you have to be fairly careful, fairly selective. You can use both sides of it. Both sides are fair game, so look at both sides of it. But you want one that has lots of sort of parts or pieces. So this one had, I think a man, right, um, Stady, if, is that yawning again? Seriously, put the camera on and I start yawning. So I had a man standing in front of a bike with an umbrella. So I like the umbrella. So I thought I'd make this wacky person, but I couldn't get the legs to look right. And I, as you can see, I'm chopping and starting a few different legs, and it just didn't look right. I cut some of the um, the foliage into sort of wings or finny wings at the moment, and then I start um, turning it into a mermaid. So I am an R a bit. I was going to chop a bit of this umming and ahhing out, but it's all sort of the process. So there's the other side of it. So the book I'm working in is actually my altered journal, my altered novel. Um, it's looking a bit sad and sorry for itself. It's nearly complete. It probably has about 10 pages left, but the spine's all buckling and the book's about fallen in half. So I probably, and this spine when I started, was about 2 inches um, in height. I wouldn't suggest doing a book that big. Again, because of the fact that every time you stick something in the book, even though I removed every second page, um, it does get really fat. Um, so I've got to work out how I'm going to rebind the books or bind the back into the covers. Hoping to finish this book up in June. Um, I started this one early last year. I thought it would only be a year, but I didn't do enough journaling last year. Back onto the page, so just fussy cutting um, out the different elements. So still trying to fizz around with some feet. Um, and I just couldn't get it to work. And it was making my... getting very frustrating, although it was still challenging. If you excuse my voice, it goes a bit croaky. I'm getting over a bout of tonsillitis. I'm a lot better now, but about four days ago I had no voice and Alexis thought it was hilarious. Because to get her to do things, I had to tap on the wall to get her attention and then almost like sign language, or my form of sign language. And if she didn't really get me because she didn't really want to do what it was, it was a croaky almost whisper. It's funny. I tend to lose my voice every time I get tons of light. It's quite, quite interesting. So cutting out more pieces and then I decide this is where I go, oh, I'll make it into a mermaid. So I'm actually very impressed with how this one turned out. Um, I was sort of playing with her tail and deciding where to put it and moving things around as I do, being very decisive. There's a rock she can sit on because she can't float in midair. So if you're wanting a challenge, certainly give this a go. Um, I'd love to see if you do decide to take one art, one magazine page and chop it all up in pieces and make something else of it. It would be fun to see um, what you come up with. So I'm getting quite happy with the way that it's going, quite happy with the way it turned out after I did a lot of pen work and things on it as well. So just sort of working out where all the pieces are. I haven't stuck any of the pieces down yet because I will be doing a background. I'll decide what am I going to do for my background. I love the words on the page, but they're a bit overpowering, so I've probably gone off to get something at this stage. Yes, there are my watercolours. These are um, Micador branded watercolours, and they're quite chalky for what they are. And you tend to use a lot of it when you... Um, I was trying to take the, the clear bit off so it'd sit on my table properly, but I couldn't do that. So just sort of making a, a bluey-greeny look. 
so she's sort of trying to do an ocean, trying to give it a bit of depth and a bit of shadow and stuff. Um, so the thing I don't like about these watercolours is, as I said, they're a bit chalky when they're finished, when they dry. And also I'm finding that the colours I've used a little bit are about half gone already and I've only had these. I bought them in August last year, so I've had them probably over six months, six, seven, eight months. Um, and haven't used them a heap. But some of the colours I have used a fair bit and I don't know if you'll be able to see it in the video but some of them are almost half gone which is very frustrating. So I don't think these ones will last very long. And some of the colours I haven't used at all so I will have to challenge myself to use some of the other colours. So trying to do a bit more on the, what's that side, the left hand side? Because um, I know my main bulk of my image will sit on the right hand side, lower part of the page. Seriously, I haven't yawned all day, and as soon as I turn the video on to do a voiceover, um, I don't know what it is. My body thinks I'm at the computer, I'm doing a voiceover, let's yawn. Anyone else have that problem, or are you that clever you edit them out? The way my voice is at the moment, I don't have time to do. A take two or a take three on the voiceovers. It's a one hit wonder. So adding some just some um, splits and splatters just to add some interest. I like doing that at the moment. Trying not to. I splattered it everywhere. It was ridiculous. It's going everywhere where it shouldn't. And this is a bit of a disaster. I'm using my hair dryer at the moment to dry things because I blew up my heat gun. Actually, it had flames coming out of it. It was about ten years old, so I can't really blame it for being on its last legs. I was using it a couple of weeks back and it decided to catch on fire so promptly it went in the bin. What well, didn't work after it caught on fire anyway, so it promptly went in the bin. So sticking down, so I've got a rock there to start with um, and just filling in a bit more green wing so there isn't a gap there and then that's the mermaid's tail you can see on the book at the moment. So as I said, I don't know whether I've said before, I really enjoyed how this one turned out. So sticking a few of the pieces together first before sticking them on so I know which order the layers go in. I'll definitely be trying this again because I think this is a great way to challenge yourself to use a very limited amount of supplies. So I'm just going through the pieces um, and these pieces I cut down for legs but I decided to, it needed something up the top. So the, the back page that I used, most of it was words which I wouldn't pick again, I'd probably pick a different page that had more pictures on the back so I had a bit more to work with but I'm happy with what it turned out to be anyway. So getting all those stuck down. Just using a normal glue stick, I didn't use Mod Podge or anything on this page, I just when I'm collaging with magazines, I tend to find the glue stick works really well. Um, sometimes I will get out um, the liquid glues, but 99% of the time I just use a cheap kid's glue stick. Um, I prefer some brands over the other ones. This one I think is a cheap one from Kmart. Come in a pack of four for like two dollars. So you don't have to have expensive supplies to actually do this challenge. You just need a piece of paper to stick your collage on, a scrap, not a scrap, a scrap, a scrap piece of paper would work. One magazine page and then a glue stick. Oh, and a pair of scissors. Would also help you cut straight lines out of things. It's a bit late at night. What else do I say when you can basically see me sticking stuff on my page? So sort of searching through the pieces to see if I can make anything else out of them. I think I'll put another piece up the top. I'm not sure. obviously cutting something. Oh yes, I put one little, little more flag up the top because it sort of needed to be balanced. So I like how I've got the words running across ways on the page with the background page and then down ways, down ways, um, down the page. I always get horizontal and vertical mucked up. Um, I've always done that ever since I was a kid. <laughs> Simple thing but, <laughs> oh I don't know. So just cutting out, what am I cutting out at the moment? Cutting out something to put on. Um, so as I said, I like how this page come out. I'll do a bit of pen work in a minute. 
you'll see me. Um, I did have to let the watercolours dry, so I did have to leave the book about half an hour just to dry it off. Otherwise, um, I couldn't work on it straight away. So I've just got a white Sharpie paint pen and my big brush pen, um, which is India ink. And you can smudge it a little if it's on a non-porous surface. So on top of the magazine pictures, where it's magazine picture on top of magazine picture, I can draw between them and smudge a little. But unfortunately, when this pen hits the raw or the watercolour raw page, it soaks in and you can't smudge it. Um, I love this white paint pen. It's one of my favourite ones. I have used a lot of paint pens before. Just moving the book around so I can do the um, scales. Um, I've used a lot of paint pens and a lot of them do blot and splodge, but I found this Sharpie one is really, really good. And I will be purchasing another one soon because that one's nearly about to run out. Don't have much success with um, white gel pens because I tend to put my paint and everything, but because this one's a paint marker, it tends to go over everything. So just adding a bit of detail, add some scales to the to the tail, added some sort of scribbly lines up the top, just sort of disguise them as being words, but they were still words there. So just going around it with the big brush pit pen. I don't think it's actually called a big brush pit pen, but it's a Faber Castell pit pen. Same sort of thing, it's got India ink in it, it's got a fairly broad tip on it. So then I decided I wanted to do some circles because the, the top and the bottom didn't seem to be joined or connected. So I decided in my wisdom that let's just put some bubbles because she's under the sea. And I put some white stuff in my bubbles, white stuff in my bubbles. I put some white marker in my bubbles, sort of try to colour them in with the paint marker by dabbing it up and down. So if you do do a one page collage challenge, let me know and um, link the video, your video or your photo down below and I'll check it out. I thoroughly enjoyed the process even though it was a bit annoying at times when I couldn't get the project to work, but I do love what it turned out like. Thank you for watching. I'd appreciate if you liked, subscribed and do all that um, stuff as well. Not that I jam it to any throat every video. Um, you do that if you want to. Just doing some little white dots in between as well. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.